Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Boldly Going where we discuss all things Star Trek going through the various series. It is Merlin, sometimes known as Joe, with the Film Fanatics Posse, Dan over here, hey, hey. Justin over there. How's it going? And since there was an extra week this month, we decided because I've told them so much about Enterprise that they said, hey, let's just, uh, it was Dan's suggestion actually, that we should, you know, let's just, Why not? Let's just check yeah, let's out do it. the fifth series of Trek uh, or yeah, the five out of the six, the fifth uh, live action major series of the prequel series Enterprise. Um, just to get a feel for it and see how you guys feel about it, and maybe you guys can decide if you want to continue reviewing it. Well, I wrote some things down because I don't know all the names yet of the people, so... Archer's the captain, that's yep. all. Good. Yeah, well, I know that much. Um, all right, so in this episode called Broken Bow, the uh, the two-part... Season, you know, the season Yeah, the, the pilot here of the yeah. show. Uh, a Klingon in the first scene named Clang uh, crashes in Oklahoma and kills the two people after him who are called Sub- Sublian... Sublian. Sublian. Yeah. Um, but he's critically wounded by a farmer, so whatever, he gets discovered. And mm-hmm. Okay, so then we've got Captain Archer, who is Scott, Quantum Leap. Scott yeah. Bacula. Uh, Bacula himself. <laughs> yep. And uh, and his buddy, Dr. Fo- uh, Phlox. Uh, they convince Starfleet to allow them to uh, take the new prototype Enterprise, since Joe said this is a prequel first series one. to Star Trek era, yep. so this is the very first one, uh, to take Clang to his home planet. But then, in doing so, Archer finds himself in the middle of a Cold War between Klingons and Sublian. And I guess I should say, that's not really the opening scene with the farmers. The opening opening is young Archer yep. with Papa Archer yep. learning about... The Starfleet. Here's what's going to happen with the, with the Federation. Because of all He's then. very yes. attached to his daddy. But and yeah. that, that takes place in, what, 2120 or something? It's like, I think, uh, roughly 100 years before TOS. Yeah. But before you start off, because that's not the real opening got to talk about that intro well uh, that was the first the cause, first cause, two scenes because and then we had the cause, song because i gotta i gotta hear it from you dan because this is i gotta hear it now joe told us off air about the song he probably mentioned it on air as well at some point <laughs> probably. um but about this this horrible enterprise song that's like soap opera ish uh it really doesn't fit at all. I love Rod Stewart as much as the next person. I don't think it's Stewart's right. version of it, but no. it's his song. Correct. And Which is not a bad song in and of itself. It's a fine song. It's a good song, but you look at it's every so other... It's so wildly out of place. Wait a minute. I you should tell right off the bat. I don't think of that being related <laughs> no, 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 no. to any sci-fi Just like sort of series, especially with the... Operatic, classical... The, boom, boom. the big, right, the big, <laughs> yeah. bombastic... Orchestral you know, score, orchestral yeah. Orchestral songs of the first four series and now we have this like Soft adult rock. contempo <laughs> alt rock sort of um way. you know it just it didn't you know uh, didn't fit at all i think it's uh, telling of where series. we're going well yeah. you, I'll, you i'll find out dan you tell me well um all right <laughs> <sighs> i okay here's what i liked about it good good i'm a bacula fan who is it He's he's done many great things over the years. Mm-hmm. You don't see him too much these days, but I think he's got some supporting stuff. He'll, oh, he'll pop up. He's, he, he's yeah, in he, NCIS New Orleans. Okay, well uh, that's why then. So there you go. That's why I don't see him. But, uh, uh, all right, that's the perfect place for him I guess. Uh, at this stage in his career. He is already a sci-fi legend from Quantum Leap. So okay, why not be a captain? Mm-hmm. Sure. Uh, I liked the the way they introduced everybody. I liked, you know, okay, here he is. He's trying to pick his crew, and he's meeting these new people. Uh, I liked Phlox a lot. Uh, doctors are always good. He's my favorite character. You're right. The Including doctors the doctor. are... Yeah, yeah, no. Like, it's one thing I say. good. The doctors are always good in every series. Yeah. Uh, the woman is okay. The Vulcan? Uh, the, yeah, the Vulcan woman. Yeah, she's right. Um, she's okay. You know, there's a, a part where he has to... Um, he gets wounded, and she basically takes over as captain for a little bit. That's probably where the where the positives end. Oh, here we go. Um, I think the main negative is that CGI. Just well, here's my main effects, issue so. though, and it's it's not directly connected to the special effects. It's more of in the real world of you know our world. So this started in what two thousand one, I believe it was. Yep. Yeah. The special effects we have access to in 2001 as Hollywood far right. are far superior to the right. 60s wait, and, and the other wait. Trek series. You're, you're talking about real life not mimicking their fake timeline, right? I'm, no, what, what I'm talking about is I'm, the things they're using are more advanced than the things we see in TOS. Yeah. 
Yeah. Right. But it takes place 100 years before. So it looks so odd. So it looks odd that they would have access to certain things when the other Enterprise crews had stuff that did looks not. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's, it's the same thing. The world's most elaborate phaser. Like, so yeah, that's like, a why, little bit annoying. It's kind of a, you know, the Star Wars prequels. Why does everything look more advanced yes. than the stuff that takes place before the original movies? Yes. Mm-hmm. You know. The effects themselves were okay, Justin. I mean, uh, look, Star we've Trek talked is... about this a hundred times. I don't go to Star Trek to see great effects. effects. Now, maybe if I'm going to the Abrams movies with an enormous budget, okay. Yeah, different story. The plot for this was all right. Like, I forget which of the other Trek pilots it was, but it didn't need to be a two-hour pilot. Next Gen. Next Gen. Was it Next Gen? They really could have condensed this and it would have been fine. Uh, I sort of like that we are getting to know the characters as he is. I always sort of like that. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. It was just okay for me. I'll give it a B-. minus. Okay. Dustin? (laughs) Well, now I know why this wasn't a huge uh, uh, contributing entry into the uh, Star Trek series franchise. Got a couple seasons. Oh, it got a couple seasons, but I wouldn't call it beloved by any stretch of the imagination. Not by many people, no. <laughs> the whole prequel angle, I like I like to a fault. The song is horrible. <laughs> and boy, is the CGI unbelievably dated, but product, product of its time, I, I understand. I remember, I remember actually when this uh, was first coming out and a couple of my uh, colleagues when I, was in, uh, when I was in school were like, this there's going to be a new Star Trek series and set on Earth and it's going to be crazy. And I was, uh, I wasn't a, by any means a uh, Trek fan, but I was, I was curious and I don't feel like I was missing anything. I'm going to just say it right now. I think Bakula is by far the worst captain. Like that's the general. No I agree. Contest. I just like him as an actor, but you know, he's charming, I guess. Mm. But I didn't even think he was charming this. It's like, okay, Kirk is ruthless, but at least he's fun. Picard's got the whole d- diplomacy thing. Cisco is sort of the fatherly figure. Janeway, Janeway's got her her perks when there's the right writer. Trying to appease everybody because she cares about. Them. I gave him the benefit of the doubt because he is a new captain, he, and so I don't think he himself knows yet what kind of captain he's going to be. So I gave back you the benefit of the doubt. Makes but sense. Here, but here's the thing: I just found like. I found virtually no reason to get behind this guy. I thought he was a sarcastic jerk. Yes. I uh, I was like, okay, you have daddy issues. That's fine. The whole Vulcan thing I thought was kind of interesting, but I I found myself getting more and more like put more uh, drawn away from him. And fortunately, though, on that same note, I although I don't like ba- Bacula's character at all, I really like the supporting cast. I thought the <laughs> I thought the crew is actually really cool. Hmm. There's kind of this really nice, cohesive manner with these characters, and I, I was interested to see how they would evolve over the course of the episode. Hmm. Did it need to be an hour and thirty minutes? Absolutely not. Hmm. It gets overblown way too quickly and takes way too long to get going. But overall, I mean, some of the aspects as it went along played out really well. I think the interplay between the crew is really cool, and I do like the whole human human Vulcan interaction trying to get past that whole thing. I loathe with a passion the whole you're showing emotion Vulcan. Ah, you're a horrible person, Bacula, deal with it. Well, you know, I, I well first I guess I'm curious what your grade is. But overall I'd say this is this is probably my the worst of the of the pilots. Yeah. I leave it with a I leave it with a C minus. Okay. Well, I mean, I think when it comes to Enterprise it's one of those things where there are definitely some things that I like that they're trying to do, like seeing the Federation from the ground up. And I see what Dan's saying, like this guy is the first captain of a newly formed Starfleet where everything hasn't been fully formed yet. So the fact that he might not have the most protocol, you know, for how to behave is understandable. But at the same time, if he's a sarcastic jerk to his crew all the time, that doesn't make him a very likable captain. And there's no way to kind of sugarcoat this. He's the least popular of all the captains, you know. He just... No, I just, can see why. He just is. Oh, yeah. Um, but, you know, I like the the early days of the Federation. I thought the plot for this episode kind of worked well enough as an intro. I think that the cast does mesh really well. I mean, there are some interesting characters there. And I like the Doctor a lot, too. Yeah. He was my favorite. I've, Absolutely. I like that actor, too. I, I forget who plays him, but he pops up in things. Okay. But, yeah, I like that guy. 
And, uh, you know, the effects are Star Trek effects. Like, this one's okay as a starting pilot. I don't mind it. Actually, it's one of the, I think, semi-decent Enterprise episodes. And it's, like, no, really, it's true. Like, the <laughs> okay the series, you know, there are better episodes than this in Enterprise, and there are far worse ones. I mean, mm-hmm. it's like, it. like there are, I mean, there are storylines that they go down that go on way too long, but they explore really interesting things. And the problem with Enterprise is it kind of feels like it was too limited as a prequel because it's before they've met all these other creatures and met all these races and had these experiences that they know. Yeah. So no spoilers, but they'll start diving into territory that doesn't even make sense. Like, why have you met these people when Picard hasn't yet? Right. You know, that, well, and I, I think that's, you know, not even TOS. That goes like, along with yeah, my issue thing. of, you know, why, why is your technology far superior to the, the Kirk crew? Well, you know, I, I, I don't, what else could they do, I guess, but a prequel? Because they've already done four other yeah. series. But you could still but, go farther and, I guess, meet new races. The, the thing yeah. is, I don't mind if the uniforms look different or the technology looks a little different. I'm actually okay with the uniforms. But, you know, but it doesn't have to look exactly the same because whatever, no. it's 100 years before. Right, I but, was fine with the uniforms. But you're right. Why does the tricorder literally look like something far more advanced when it takes <laughs> right. place when yeah. in this universe of the far future, it looks like a 60s yes. box? It should probably look similar to that. It's like right. this is the model that will become that. Like it's a smaller version of the big brick. Yeah, yeah. I just think that was a continuity issue that, that someone should have brought up. And yeah. if you think that minor thing is big, their Enterprise has huge continuity things like – you know, with time travel and everything else, that's it abuses. You know how Trek does time travel a lot. They try to use it yeah. sparingly, but it does come up a lot. Enterprise takes the cake where they have story arcs based around oh. it. Oh no! So, so you know that shows how limited they were on ideas. Well, oh, what's your grade? First of all, I mean, I think this one is okay. I, yeah. I like it. It's a B minus for me. Okay. Like, I, okay, I think it's all right. So definitely a minority, but yeah, I mean, I yeah, don't. I think it was a little harsh just because it's pilots are hard to do. They are because you know you have to introduce. The, the world to you know six eight ten people no. that we've never met before no i mean like as a start for the series i think it's fine yeah uh, and i there are things about enterprise i do like but the problem is there are some horrible episodes in there mm-hmm. now i oh, want sure. to wanted to ask you guys based upon your impression would you want to review more enterprise episodes? not particularly okay um <laughs> and i know just if i'm saying that i know justin feels the same i mean i'm not opposed to it i'd Personally, if we're going to like have another filler week... Yeah, I think I'd, every I'd time rather, there's a five-week month. Yeah, I'd personally rather play with the animated series to I, say I th- we covered all our bases. I think that'd be fair to do that next time. That's fine. Yeah, you can do like two episodes because they're short. Yeah, that's true. That makes sense. Um, one other thing that bothered me, though, about this mm-hmm. was the f- flagrant use of language. Yeah. We get yeah. it. It's 2001 and you're on UPN. You can say ass. You can say bitch. I got it. Oh, yeah. And they, <laughs> like, no, you're, you're telling they were to, just throwing them up gratuitously, though. And this is one of those little things that I think encapsulates the issue that Enterprise has that it doesn't seem like Star Trek. This right. is the ideal society. And even if it is a prequel, this is still the same universe. You know, mm, this yeah. is, it just doesn't fit. It doesn't. When you watch Enterprise episodes, it doesn't really feel like Star Trek. It's so far removed. And I think even from it's this... It's more like BSG, if anything. Exactly. It's closer to Battlestar Galactica, for sure. And even... I bet you guys can even tell that from the opening scene. It didn't it, feel it, like Star it Trek It feels at all. like a totally different thing. Yeah. And I'm not sure exactly why that was, stylistically, but it's just little things like that, like the cursing, the offhanded captain, yep. you know, the heavier action, inconsistent special effects that look, you know too advanced as opposed to too cheesy right you know yeah. there's just there's a certain you know identity issue that i think it has right from that opening right. the opening tells you everything you need to know i think that song we have <laughs> classical 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 rod soft stewart. Rock. Yeah, rod stewart. Like, there's <laughs> said. there's something they're trying to do here why did we do this yeah you know so that's that's enterprise and i don't know if we'll ever or when we'll talk about it again but uh you never know the thing is there's one of the worst episodes is like a couple after this one so oh no well yeah, it's the rape episode. I'll just leave it at that. Uh, okay. Yeah, so, you know, all we're, we're talking about... Um, well, I guess we could do a quick wrap-up, um, I guess, so far of the five series. Uh, how was it this week? You guys remember? <laughs> Who won this round? Um, boy, it's this hard going. to remember. <laughs> this uh, let's see. There was a lot... There were a couple that dealt with people a in lot. other people's bodies. Yeah. yeah. You had the Picard one. DS9. Where he was in the other body... Uh, and then the the Voyager one as well. 
So I'm going to have to give it to TOS because I think it's the only one of the whole run, other than the Enterprise pilot, <laughs> that didn't deal with somebody being in someone else's body or brain. Well, you know, it's funny. So for sheer originality, I'll give it to TOS. You bring that up, and I, I guess it hasn't happened, but you're right. They have gone over that because that does happen in TOS a couple of times. I'm sure. <laughs> the body swap I'm thing. sure it does. You know, so I guess there's a tradition <laughs> of going through some of my ideas. Yes, it just so happens we hit on them the worst all, all right at the same time. That's true. But, uh, you know, there's plenty to talk about, guys. So, one of your comments, let us know what you thought about Enterprise. I'm sure it's not positive if there's anything. But, you know, we'll be <laughs> talking about TOS, and that's always fun. And we'll be continuing later. So, I'm going to say goodbye, and these gentlemen can say goodbye, too. Yep, take care. See you around. Disengage.